Hello and welcome back, G-Man in the studio. This is the 4027 VCO, a 10 HP Eurorack adaptation of the ARC 2600 VCO2. It is so named to honor the 4027 VCO cores used not only in the 2600 but the Odyssey as well. These 4027 cores would produce a simple sawtooth wave. Once the core was plugged into the main PCB, it could derive other waveforms. The 2600 takes the VCO core sawtooth and typically derives a square wave for the other voices. VCO2 drives not only the square wave with pulse width modulation, but a triangle as well. And from the triangle, a sine wave is then derived. My 4027 VCO is an all analog with all discrete components, so it sounds nice, warm, and fat. <laughs> In bringing that special tone to life, the 4027 VCO keeps the circuit as close to the original as possible. A matched and thermally coupled transistor pair, a temperature compensation resistor for tuning stability, a low ESR styrene capacitor, an Interfet premium dual FET can, 5 NPN monolithic substrate transistor array, precision tune and tracking trimmers, and the 70 spec op amps are still in production today. You didn't need to know all that really, but I just wanted you to know how much work and how many parts are going into this project. <laughs> We have illuminated burn slider pots for initial frequency, fine tuning, and initial pulse width. The CV1 input is a wide frequency modulation destination. The CV2 input is a reduced frequency modulation for dialing in small amounts of vibrato, but it still has ample range at the top end. The keyboard input is volts per octave and it must be positive voltage, like 0 to 5, 0 to 8, or 0 to 10 volts. When the initial frequency is all the way down, the keyboard range is from C1 to C8. When frequency is all the way up, the keyboard can access frequency well past the 40K, which is well outside the range of human hearing. Plugging nothing into the keyboard input isn't very useful. The oscillator range is around 10 Hz, maybe up to 500 or 550 Hz. This is mainly due to the module using 10 volts of power, whereas the 2600 uses 15. Now let's get on to the waveforms, starting with that beautiful sine wave. That one is quite musical and great for sub bass. Next, the triangle. It sounds like a cross between the sign and sawtooth. Now, sawtooth. Last, the pulse. For a 50% wave, you'll have to put the slider more around 60%.
which goes right down to zero on that one. And then modulate the width by an external signal, like an LFO. There's nothing like the sound of two analog VCOs. When their tuning is as close to each other, but not exactly, you'll hear that classic beating sound. Also try tuning one of the VCOs a third, fifth, or octave above the other one. some fun to be had modulating the frequency of an oscillator with the output of another oscillator. CV1 is a wide range modulation. Plug in the output of a VCO for classic FM synthesis. There are plenty of sweet spots waiting to be discovered. VCO2 is a reduced range modulation that can help you find the sweet spot for vibrato. But it still has ample range at the top end if you want to get crazy. CV1 and CV2 do interact with the frequency path, even when nothing is plugged into them. These inputs are not buffered, and nothing is normal to these jacks, like on the 2600. Well, that about sums things up. The 4027 VCO. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.